Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you a game from round 4 of the Singfield Cup in St. Louis. This is a game played between Fabiano Caruana and Lavon Aronian. So far only Anand has managed to achieve a decisive result in this tournament and he leads the field by half a point. Will Fabiano manage to achieve something here with the white pieces? So let's find out. So Caruana opened with e4, we have e5 from Aronian, knight f3, knight c6. We have the Spanish game with bishop b5 and knight f6 to Berlin defense. So here white usually responds with castle's kingside, bishop takes c6 or d3. These are the most common replies. Caruana opted for the quiet line d3, signaling that he is prepared for a slow and long battle. So Ronian played bishop c5, we have c3, castles from both sides, rook e8, and d4, this is a bit of a surprise. So bishop g5 and knight bd2 are the most common moves here. But here d4 played. It has been seen before in 8 games, with Pantala Hari Krishna being the highest rated player to try this. It does, however, seem a little suspect to waste another tempo breaking in the center, especially when black is slightly ahead in his piece development. Bishop back to b6. So in the game between Hari Krishna and Almasi, Hari Krishna tried rook to e1. The game continued along the lines of something like this. Black basically ended up winning a rook and three pawns for two minor pieces, and he went on to win that game. But in this game, Caruana played d5, and already on move 8, we have a novelty in the highly theoretical Roy Lopez. Knight back to e7, knight takes e5, knight takes e4, queen f3, knight f6. And now we can see the idea behind this novelty of d5. Caruana played d6, inflicting damage on black's structure. In addition to the double pawns, black will also face some difficulties in trying to develop his light square bishop. Ronian tried d5, knight d6, rook f8, bishop g5, and now knight to e4, so giving back the pawn. Now d5, so Aronian succeeds in untangling, but Caruana still has this isolated pawn to work with. Now knight a3, so it would be nice to try and occupy d4 in the future. Bishop c7, logical move from Aronian since the queen is a bit overloaded trying to protect the bishop and the pawn on d5. Aronian is also looking for attacking chances down this diagonal. Caruana also goes for the very logical rook to d1, piling up on that weakness. Knight e5, queen to e2. So you can capture on d5, but this isn't that great. After bishop e6, rook d2, knight g4, black is doing fine here. With pressure on a2 and h2. So queen e2, pawn to a6, bishop g4, played to provoke f3, hoping to loosen that bishop. Now pawn to f4, so Caruana manages to boot away this pesky knight. And this works tactically because, well, if bishop g4, you can play rook takes c5, and this wins. So Aronian played knight back to c6, queen f3 piling up on the d5 pawn and simply removing the queen from any potential danger down this file. d5 is now increasingly hard to defend for Aronian. Aronian played bishop b6, so hoping for bishop takes b6 after something like queen f2. Then black goes d4, getting rid of his isolated pawn, and he is doing fine in this position. 
So if white were to capture on b4, then he himself would have an isolated pawn. So we see knight c2 from Caruana. Knight to a5, and now Caruana grabs the pawn. Black, however, still has some pressure in this position, with now queen b6. Rook back to d3. So if queen takes b2, I think Caruana's idea is queen d5 check, followed by knight f5, and white gets a nice kingside initiative with ideas like queen f7. Also ideas like knight d6, trying to get a moderate mate. In this game, we see knight to c4 from Aronian simply attacking the pin knight. And here, queen d5 check, forking the knight and king, leading to simplification of the position. So the pressure has subsided, and Karwana is up a pawn, but not so easy to convert this due to black's active queen and rook. So Karwana first played h3, solving his background issues, and now his best chance is to try and take advantage of black's awkwardly placed king being cut off by the queen, while trying to maintain some pressure on the queen side pawns. So let's see how the game continue. Rook f3. So hinting at possibilities of rook to g3. Queen takes b2 from Aronian, queen takes a6. Now a very interesting move by Aronian, h5. So understandably Aronian wants to deny Caruana the g3 square for the rook, but here it was better to go queen to e2. The threat is to play rook d3, simplify the position. So let's make a waiting move. Let's say king to g1, then you would go rook g3, and this doesn't look easy to convert at all. Probably a draw since black's queen is very active and white's pawns are a little bit weak. So after queen e2, if white tries king to h2 with the idea of supporting the rook to g3, you don't really want to play rook d2 since black's idea is to play rook g3 anyway, defending and also attacking g7. And this is, I think this is good for white. However, after king to h2, you play queen c4, looking at all the weak pawns, and this would have put up better resistance. After h5, we have king h2, h4. This leaves the pawn and uh, the h pawn a little bit vulnerable. So here, queen b6 is actually strong. Attacking the rook on d8, and this gives uh, Aronian a tough decision. If he plays, say, rook d2, well, this leaves the back, uh, the back rank vulnerable. For example, queen b8, rook e3. And you can see that white's queen is attacking the black king while simultaneously defending g2. And this starts to be rather dangerous for black. So if rook to e8, then queen c5, then queen h5, attacking the rook and also this pawn on h4. And this is quite unpleasant because if the pawn falls, then the rook will have access to g3. So if queen d2, then you can capture on b5. So black can play rook d2, forcing the queen to defend. Black has some pressure, but only two results are possible here. The draw or a win for white. So after h4, queen b6 was the best move. 
Caruana played queen e7. So this missed opportunity allowed Aronian to consolidate a bit. So trading the queens would lead to a draw. Caruana kept the queens on the board. And queen d5, which uh, with such an active queen, it's difficult for Caruana to try and make progress here. So Aronian doing fine up to this point, but he was very low on time. A4 played by Caruana. So B takes A4 seems sufficient to draw the game. However, Aronian played Queen to C5. And this was a big mistake and severe time trouble. So he missed Rook to E8 check. Obviously, this cannot be taken because of queen captures c5. But here white is simply up two connected past pawns. And this is simply a hopeless position for Aronian. So the game continued for a bit. And after c5, Levon Aronian resigned. Pretty unfortunate slip by Aronian. Caruana kept just enough pressure throughout the game to win it. So with this win, Caruana joins Viswana Dananan in the lead at 2.5 out of 4. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more chess content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.